Hello everyone and welcome to Tychus Teaches You Stuff. Today we're going to talk about Warrior Guild made custom sheaths, some of their benefits, the process of actually how they're made, and then I'll give you some examples of some different sheaths that I've thrown together just for you guys. Uh, first of all is the benefits. Uh, outside of them just be visually interesting, they actually do have some functional benefits. Uh, regardless of the materials, where they're worn, or how big they are, they will all weigh at less than two pounds. Uh, they, if made correctly, will hold five weapons and up to 25 pounds of weight from those weapons. And as well, they have the ability to reduce the weight of your weapon by two pounds, which can be a big benefit to those who have encumbrance issues or uh, smaller races. So we are going to get right into putting one of these together. And uh, first off, there's a handful of required materials that you'll need to um, even start the process. First thing you have to do is you have to be in the guild workshop. You can't do any of these steps while you're outside of the workshop or it will give you an error telling you that you have to be in the workshop. Secondly, you're going to need your materials. Uh, here I have a heavy backpack with some things in it um, just for the making of the sheath today. Uh, we are going to use orc hides, skeleton bones, ogre teeth, and then um, I'm going to show you how to make it specifically for a short sword um, as well as make it as large as possible which is is really the only smart way to do it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this short sword and we're going to give it a measure. Um, all of the commands used by this uh, system are going to start with the W trick sheath M and you can put that um, by itself and it will generate a list of commands where you can just click and each command will then give you its set of sub commands it makes the process fairly simple uh, once you get into the end here with the inlaid buying fringe trim and hold things get a little more confusing but up until you've actually sewn it together things are pretty straightforward so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and measure this short sword. Uh, I'm going to put the type the commands in uh, just so you can see what we're doing here. So you'll see here this uh, W trick sheath M measure generates it measures the sword and shows us that you would need eight hides, eight units of hide to make a sheath for this weapon. Uh, unfortunately, that's a silly thing as all sheaths, regardless of size weigh exactly the same. Um, each 10 units used will allow the sheath to hold a single weapon and up to 5 pounds. So 10 units holds 5 pounds and one weapon. 20 units holds 10 pounds and two weapons. 30 units is 3 pounds and 15 and so on all the way up to 50 um, units of hide will give you 5 weapons and 25 pounds. Like I said, it doesn't matter how big they are, uh, they all weigh less than two pounds. So there's there's absolutely no reason to not use all 50 hides. They're not that hard to get. Um, and I think in the long run, you'll benefit from th this. The only caveat to that whole statement uh, about two pounds weight is that is the um, weight when you were to weigh something. So if I get one of these sheaths, and we actually weigh it, weigh sheath, you can see there that it says that the weight is less than two pounds. I believe that is the smallest weight that the, the game can um, display. Uh, according to the wiki and to some of the forum posts, the actual Bard Sung game calculated weight is one half of a pound. Um, I have no way to actually confirm that, um, so I've just referred to it as less than two pounds, but I believe the actual uh, weight when it comes to encumbrance is one half of one pound, which is even better. Okay, so the next step in this process 
um, is to start cutting hides. Uh, actually, we're going to bring up this menu here, and this is actually displays and the order in which you should do things. Um, it's accurate. Measure, cut, cure, sew, strap, initial. After that, uh, the order can be changed up, but the beginning up until uh, strap, at least, is a set order, and you should follow that. So the next step we're going to have to do is to um, cut some hides into the appropriate pattern. Uh, let's put these away so I have some hands to work with. All right, so now we've got some hands. In our backpack, we have a bundle of orc hides times five. So you're going to get your hides from... The game automatically will stick them in your right hand, which of course is wrong. I don't know why, but it always seems to go into the wrong hand. So in order to start cutting this, proce this cutting process, the hides need to be in your left hand, and either an existing pattern or nothing needs to be in your right hand. And we're going to go ahead and cut 10 of these hides, and we're going to make a sheath. So W trick sheath M cut uh, 10 for the number of hides. If we were making that, that uh, specific 8 hide sheath, that's where the 8 would go. You would put uh, W trick sheath M cut 8, and then the word sheath is for the pattern that we're choosing. Um, it can be a whole variety of things. Um, I'll put a list here on the side um, and so you can see the different uh, nouns that can be used uh, that you can make. So for today we're going to make a sheath though. W trick sheath M cut 10 sheath. And it's going to generate 10 seconds of round time. It's always 10 seconds, not variable. Um, and now in your right hand you're going to see that you have a sheath pattern. If you look at your pattern, it has 10 units of orc hides. So we're going to go all the way to 50, so we're going to have to do this five times. You get hides from your container. This time it'll put them in your right hand or in your left hand and your right hand already has the pattern. So then again, all we have to do is cut again. Now you can see that you have 20 units in your pattern. And we're going to rinse and repeat all the way to 50. All right, so now you can see we're sitting here. We now have 50 units of orc hide in our pattern, and we're ready to move on to the next step. We're going to go ahead and generate our list here again. We've measured, we've cut. Now it's time to cure. Curing has three different choices you can use. You can cure, cure mild, strong, or lacquer. If we use the mild cure, the sheath will maintain the material name of an orc hide sheath. If we go ahead and choose strong, it will turn it from orc hides into leather, so you'll have a leather sheath. If we choose lacquer, uh, it's similar to the strong, except you would have a lacquered sheath as opposed to an orc hide or a leather. We're going to go ahead today and we're going to choose strong. And we get 10 more seconds of round time. It costs us some money and you're going to get a curing time. Um, this one says I'd guess that it'd take about 35 hours to dry. Uh, the way it determines how long it is going to dry is how many skins you have in the pattern. It's 42 minutes per skin, with a minimum of four skins and a maximum of 50 skins. And you can choose um, how many skins you want in the pattern. And once they are cured and dried, you can then bundle them back together. Um, so if you want to be the most efficient, you would have made a whole bunch of four skin patterns, cured them individually, and in four or five hours, They'd be done, and you could then take your dozen packages, open them all up, stick them back together into one pattern. I tend to keep them into one pattern uh, and eat the 35 hours um, just because it's much easier inventory management for me to have one package than it is to have a dozen different packages that I'm trying to keep track of.
Okay, through the magic of television, 35 hours have passed, and we can see that in our package, it appears to be dry. Next step, all we have to do is open the package, and in our hand will appear a sheath pattern. Now that we have a sheath pattern, we can go ahead and move on to the next step, which will be to sew. I'm going to take a look, and it looks like, yep, we still have a cured sheath pattern and it has 50 units of orchids. I just wanted to make sure I had the right pattern and we'll go ahead and move on to our list. W Trick Sheath M once again brings up our list. We have measured, cut, and cured. Now it is time to sew. W Trick Sheath M sew. Costs us just a little bit of silver, a little more round time, and at this point in your right hand you'll see you'll have a real leather sheath. This is a wearable, usable item. As it is, you don't have to take it any further, um, but what's the point if you don't at least customize it a little bit? So, the next step we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and put this on, and I'll see you. As is, a leather sheath is belt-worn, um, and this is fully functional. You can use it as it is. The next step is to put on a strap. W trick sheath M strap will bring up the list of possible um, locations for it to be worn. At this point I will have to walk back an earlier statement about only ever using 50 hides. Um, the only time you would ever want to use less than 50 hides is if you're going to put a strap on it that um, lets you wear it in some of the smaller uh, areas of your body. In this case you cannot use um, the maximum number hides if you're, you're um, planning on putting a strap for the arm, the thigh, the ankle, or the wrist. As you can see, each of those has its own maximum um, number of hides that can be used. The wrist is 4, the ankle is 8, the thigh is 16, and the arm is, uh, once again, 8. Um, I tend to do shoulder-worn or waist-worn um, so that never really comes into it, but a thigh sheath is nice because it's just a location that doesn't get uh, used by other things very often. But like I said, that's one of the few things I need to walk back um, is so you know that 50 hides cannot be worn everywhere. We are going to go ahead and make this a shoulder sheath. So W trick sheath M strap shoulder. There we go. More silvers, more round time. Next up comes decorations. Pull up our list here and we can see what our choices are. Um, we've measured, cut, cured, sewn, applied a strap. We've not done our initials. When you um, add your initials, it just adds to the uh, show description. It's not uh, visible in the outward. So, but we'll go ahead and add it and I'll show you what that looks like. W trick sheath M I initial P I A L. If I can spell. There we go, you stamp your initials onto the sheath. Take a look at the sheath and we can see your initials stamped upon it. Um, that's what uh, I see is there are my initials, otherwise it, you'll see the initials of Tychus stamped upon it. And now comes the fun part. After initials, the die, inlay, bind, fringe, trim, or hold are variable. Each harness, or sheath in this case, uh, has two descriptive positions. There's one at the beginning and one at the end. The material and the noun. So it's first descriptor, material, noun, second descriptor. And we can change um, the first descriptor and the last descriptor how we choose. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to put one together and we'll show you how it's done and you'll get a better feel for it. I am going to start by applying a binding in the first position. W trick sheath M bind. And that should bring us up a list here and you can see what kind of metals are available. Uh, in the first position you can only choose one material. If you use it on the in the second position you can choose two separate materials but we're using it in the front here and I'm going to choose iron. Once again there's a little bit of cost and a little bit of round time. Um, and if we take a look down, we can see that we now have an iron-bound leather shoulder sheath 
in our right hand. You'll notice if you look up at the available uh, list of metals, you'll see that Venium is listed here. That is only available in the landing. Um, each of the greater towns uh, have a unique material uh, to them. The wiki has a list, or I'll post a list here on the side, and you can see uh, which ones are unique to wear. Our second position descriptor for this sheath is going to be teeth and bones. Um, you can apply them both, or you could apply them singly. Only in the second position can you put two items. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get teeth. We should grab them from our backpack. You will need six of any of these descriptive, uh, these um, decorative items, whether they are gems or the additional skins. Um, you will need six of them. If you're going to use two different ones, like today we're going to use teeth and bones, you will need six teeth and six bones. The process is similar. We do W trick, sheath M, and if you're using skins, it's going to be fringe. And there we go, more silvers, more round time. And if we take a look down, you will see that we now have an iron bound leather shoulder sheath fringed with ogre teeth. We could stop at this point, or we could have stopped anywhere along this point, but we're gonna go ahead and get our bones and we're going to do the exact same thing again. And if you notice, um, in the above description, the ironbound leather shoulder sheath fringed with ogre teeth, it uh, maintains the, the descriptor of ogre for the teeth. When you add a second item, it is just going to be teeth. Um, see, we went from ogre teeth to just teeth and bones. So it'll go like that with uh, gems as well. If we had used um, mermaids, tear sapphires um, singularly and not had it a second one, it would have been a teeth inlaid with mermaids, tear sapphires. But had we done sapphires and uncut diamonds, it would have cut all of the um, first position descriptors and we would have just ended up with sapphires and diamonds. Same here. Instead of ogre teeth and skeleton bones, we just end up with teeth and bones. Now, in my hand right now, I have a wearable, usable, warrior-made custom sheath um, that has both descriptors filled and uh, holds five weapons, 25 pounds, reduces the weight. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll show you a couple other ones so that you can see how the inlay goes uh, and how um, the hold position and the dying goes. I've gone ahead and assembled another sheath just like we did earlier, except this one is um, completely blank at this point. That way we can try a couple other combinations and you can see how each of those steps goes. There we go, we have a blank leather sheath in our right hand. Um, so for this one, we're going to dye it black or a black and we're going to inlay some gems in the second position so you can see how both dyeing and inlaying goes. First thing we're going to do though is we're going to hold the first position. This really only comes into play when you are going to dye something. Um, the act of dyeing it generates a drying time just like curing did. So it's um, really convenient to go ahead and fill the second position, have the sheath essentially done before you add the dye because then you can give your customer um, the finished package and whenever it's dry, he can just open it up and the product's done. You don't have to come back and do it again. Um, so we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hold the first position. It's W trick, sheath M, hold. And that will, for the time being, uh, leave the first decorative position empty and allow us to do something in the second position. Um, so we're going to inlay some gems. I bought some jade. Uh, at some point and we're going to go ahead and inlay those in the second position um, so you can see what a long description of uh, something looks in the second position. W trick sheath M inlay and as long as you're holding the gem you want to inlay in your left hand and the sheath in your right hand. There we go. It has attached it. Uh, you'll see it, uh, the message you need to attach a total of six of these though it doesn't tell you how many you currently have attached, what you do is you go ahead and look at the sheath uh, and it gives you the description and at this point it says it has one piece of teardrop of green black jade fixed upon it. So get more jade, inlay again, 
more round time, and uh, you're just going to rinse and repeat this up until you have six gems attached. All right, I have finished inlaying the last of the jades, and now you can see that it is a leather sheath inlaid with teardrop of green black jade. Uh, this can be fun to do in the second position if you use gems because the uh, gem cutters and lapidary box gems will maintain their long description uh, in this position. If you use them in the first position, it would just be a jade inlaid leather sheath. Um, the first p descriptive position always just uh, shortens the descriptions down to essentially the noun, um, but if you use them in the second position, it maintains the entire long description as long as it's a as you're only using a single type so gem cutters and lapidary boxes can uh, really expand what's what's possible so we're gonna go ahead and go back now and we're gonna dye this uh, but first thing we need to do is w trick sheath m hold now by doing it again you'll see that the decoration spot is no longer being held that means we can go back and now we can apply dye and it will uh, let us put it back in the first position. Um, so we're going to W trick sheath M die. Now you have two options here. We can, if we just do the word die, it'll give us a drop down box, and you can choose one of these obscene number of colors. Uh, I really suggest that you go on to the wiki page and look under the sheath making page and um, they have a wonderful chart broken down in the colors and you can choose them that way. The other crazy way to do it is to do W trick sheath M die and all and it will generate a list within, oops, within the game window of all the colors that you can choose from. Um, I always just look on the wiki, choose the color, and W trick, sheath, M, die, and I th think this should work, faded, black. There we go. See, this is where it generated another long and even longer drying time. I put another package in our right hand, but essentially we're done. We just wait for the dye to dry, uh, open the package up again and you will have uh, the product in hand. Uh, you'll also notice that this is one of the most expensive portions of the project. Uh, it's 2,500 silvers. The only other thing is inlaying metals, which we'll do on a, uh, another sheath here in just a minute. We are back at the workshop with another blank sheath. You can see I've got a leather sheath in our hand and nothing else. The last um, part of this is to trim. Uh, it's very similar to the binding, uh, except it's just the word trim versus bound, uh, and the metals uh, are exactly the same. You can use them the same. You can trim at the beginning or at the end. If used at the beginning, it would be a metal trimmed leather sheath, and if we did it at the end, it would be a leather sheath trimmed in whichever metals. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get right to this. W trick sheath M all right, we're going to hold the first position. You've already seen how the first position works. And now we're going to just go ahead and put a trim in a second position so I can show you how to use two metals. And w trick sheath M trim. It's going to generate the exact same list as uh, with the binding. We're going to choose silver. And... Uh, as soon as the round time is over, we will, well, let's hear. Let's look down and you can see a leather sheath trimmed with just silver. And if we do it again, we can actually type the word gold in there if you know exactly what you're doing. W trick sheath M trim gold. Generates round time. This costs us some silvers. We glance down and there it is. We see the last uh, sheath, W or leather sheath trimmed with silver and gold. Let's look at our list here and make sure we covered everything. I've showed you how to measure, to cut, to cure. So how to apply a shap, strap uh, to stamp your initials and then the decorative positions of die, inlay, bind, fringe, trim, and hold. I hope we have covered everything. I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please like and subscribe and I will try to get some more videos up here.
Once again, my name is Tychus, and this is Tychus Teaches You Stuff, and I hope you have a great day.